Well, it's not a Conor McGregor fight week without a chat with the one and only John Cavanaugh, the head man over at SBG Ireland. Of course, Conor McGregor's longtime coach. We've been doing this for quite some time as well, and it's great to keep the tradition alive. There he is, a, a freshly shaven John Cavanaugh. I hardly recognize him, looking like he's 22 years old, looking in great form leading up to the big return fight. John, thank you as always for the time. Thank you very much. It's a uh... It's a shame we didn't get to do it more often uh, in the last couple of months, but it's always fun to speak with you. Thank you. And uh, I, I will I will bring that up. We will talk about that. But first, this is a very special one for you personally. First time as a, as a head coach going into a Conor McGregor fight as a father. What's yes. that like? Yeah, it's a, a new experience. He's um, almost six months old now, and it's to be able to bring him along and, and Orla along. Connor's been treating us ridiculously well, as usual. All our travel is so nice and the hotels, et cetera. And, you know, some, some sneaky shots went out of his yacht earlier on. So <laughs> we're, being, we're being spoiled rotten. I'm a little bit sad that he'll have zero memories of it. But Orla has taken about 22,000 pictures. So he'll be able to look back at it. Uh, of course, congratulations to you and Orla on the birth of Connell. I remember last time we spoke, you had just revealed that uh, you were expecting so I'm glad that everything is going well it's great to see the photos it's also great to see like the evolution also you know like of you and Connor in particular when all this started you were just kind of you know two guys doing your thing now he has two kids expecting a third you have your child I know Sergey has his uh, his son Albert who Connor told me about what's it like now to go through this evolution but with all these little tykes running around as well it's it's very strange like you said I was barely 30 when I met Connor who was a teenager and even, even even the likes of like own roddy being he was a child when he started the my gym another teenager and um, now he has a bunch of kids himself and one of one of one of the better sparring partners we've had on this trip lee hammond i'm a world champion he started under own roddy as maybe he was 11 or 12 and now he's in his 20s as part of the training camp so just to see us all go through um various stages of life uh, it's 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 very interesting and one other question if i can about just you know the last few months you're you're a gym owner and i know in in ireland it's it's been very strict right a little bit different than here in america uh, and you guys expanded recently right uh to i think you call yeah, it great monster. timing yeah. you, huh? <laughs> what, what what has it been like <laughs> how, how has business been disastrous um we've been on and off since march probably more often on. Um, it looks like it's going to be another, we're, we're, we're closed now officially until February 1st, but I have a feeling they're going to extend that for another month or two, possibly. Um, so it's really, really tough. There's a lot of gym suffering, you know, of Connor already helping out some of our teammates. Um, but some, you know, some, some gym owners, some restaurant owners that I know, small business delicatessens and so on and will shut and not reopen. So it's, it's, it's tragic. It's heartbreaking. It's very tough. And I hope that we have better times coming soon. Amen. Um, obviously no one could have predicted the pandemic, but I remember seeing you guys in the locker room, January 18th, he had just defeated Donald Cerrone 40 seconds. It was, you know, obviously spectacular. If I would have told you, Pandemic stuff aside, if I would have told you Connor ends up fighting once in 2020, given his mindset, given the plans, would you have believed me? Because I know some people rolled their eyes. Oh, yeah, he's going to fight three times. He hasn't fought three times since 2016. But it felt at least to me like you guys truly believed you would get at least three fights in last year. Yeah, I definitely I definitely would have thought you were crazy if you said once in that length of time. Um so it's, yeah, it's a terrible shame, but of course, there's people going through much, much tougher things than, um, you know, someone not being able to do a sport. So, but it's just, it's, it's sad, you know, it, an athlete's career is finite. It, it doesn't go on forever. And to lose a year of, of his peak condition, which he is, I feel only really entering now because he was always incredibly skillful, but now the other areas are catching up or have caught up in terms of conditioning and in, in maturity and so on. So we're in for, we're in for a good couple of years and I'm, well, let's, let's look forward to them rather than regretting looking back. For you though, if I could just ask, knowing the kind of place that he was in, knowing the kind of shape that he was in, once the sport came back, I'm talking summer, spring, 
fall. Was it frustrating, you know, for you to see those months go by and him not get a fight? Because it seemed like he was almost like a caged animal ready to go and willing to fight anyone. And yet nothing was materializing. And, and obviously they pushed it to January. Was that frustrating as someone who has seen him go through the ups and downs, knowing the spot that he was in to see those, those months kind of get wasted? What was that like? Yeah, it was very tough, you know. Um, we were apart for quite a bit, you know, with the gym being closed. It was mostly just texting and it would, you know, the text would start getting a little bit intense. Uh, looks like we have this date and it could be this guy, it could be that guy and it's it's building and then it's gone away. And then on the other side of it, I'm, I'm barely a year into a big new gym that I've just built and I'm juggling bills and, and you know, you're not collecting fees from members and, it's, there was a lot of pressure of a new new baby in the house and we're recently in a, in, in a new home and you're, you're, you're trying to figure out how you're going to make all this work. So you, you have a lot of heads going on. So yes, of course I was um, frustrated at him losing these weeks, months, and as it turned out, a year. But there was also a lot of luck going on in my own life at the time. So you're, you're weighing up what to worry about more, you know? Mm. Once you were finally told that Dustin Poirier was going to be the guy in January, January 23rd to be exact, and it wasn't, you know, a Gaethje who we spoke about, uh, a Diaz trilogy, a title fight. It's a rematch of a fight that he won very convincingly back in 2014. What did you think? Oh, I was just delighted that, I, you, you know, with Dustin for sure, he's signing to that line and he's showing up. And I remember the very first Twitter exchange, which was probably November, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it was a fair bit back where it was, Connor had suddenly had this crazy idea as he does about hiring out the tree arena just for him and one person <laughs> to show up and do a spar, um, which I was just, you know, what can you do except, except laugh at that? Um, but when Dustin replied and then they started having a bit of a back and forward, I thought to myself, that's done. We're fighting Dustin in, in a couple, you know, I don't know how, I don't know where, I don't know the exact circumstances, but I, but I was really confident that made it done. And then, of course, I followed, um, as we all have, Dustin's path since his since that loss quite a few years ago. And he's looked um, great. He's looked really good um, at lightweight in, in his fights. So it's very motivating. It's very exciting. It's very interesting. I think it's a great storyline to see where they are now. Again, going from that kind of mid-20s and whatever else you have going on in your life to early thirties becoming fathers and, you know, grown ups, if you will. Um, so there's a lot to look forward to in that fight. Who has improved more since 2014, Conor McGregor or Dustin Poirier? Conor McGregor. And I'll tell you why. So I was thinking back actually, and we had a bit of it. That's why I was texting you the, the, the question that when we fought the first time we were, a very small setup. You're talking really me, you know, Sergio was only kind of starting with his own right. He was just kind of coming into his own as being a striking coach. So a very, a very uh, un, uh, inexperienced team training in a windy warehouse in Dublin, you know, all those years ago. And we get our first big fight in America. And, you know, there's a funny story, I'll maybe tell you another time, about me and Artem arriving in Vegas first, and we got put up in the Red Rock, and we didn't realize what we, some of the things in the room we were allowed to have. Um, <laughs> so very, like, you know, kind of immature and inexperienced and, and bright-eyed, bright -eyed looking around at everything. Uh, no, no, no real formal full-time conditioning coach no real understanding of the data that we now have on them on sleep patterns on heart rate resting heart rates on vo2 max on lactate training zones all of these things you know we're, you're really comparing stone age warriors to guys now measuring things with lasers and um, dustin was already a member of you know globo gym at that stage he already had this incredible you know maybe the most beautiful facility in, in mma do you have a a billionaire backer. I'm still looking for one of them. Um, you know, very experienced full-time coaches. And uh, he had a lot behind him that we really didn't. We had a bit of a crazy guy with a big left hand. And the rest of us were doing our best. 
And if I compare now with the setup we have, I, I don't know if you've seen the UFC countdown. It's it's really good. It kind of you see a bit more of um, Doctor uh, Doctor Julian. That's that's the behind the, the sort of brains behind Fast, if you will, and the sort of data he's been keeping for. We now have, I guess, five or six years worth of data with these guys. Very closely monitoring everything you know we, we've re- the 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 other side the other factors that make up a great athlete that make up a great fighter have finally caught up to the mindset and the raw skill i'll, I'll avoid talent as a word the raw skill that connor had so whereas you know dustin still in global gym still still has all those great facilities that he's had all that time definitely you know it has improved of course he has but he's really he's 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 going against uh, um, a real world class elite level athlete now. That has improved also in the skill sets. So as you know, like one of the the narratives going into this fight is all right, Connor is the man, but like Dustin has come a long way since 2014. He's a much better fighter, evolved fighter, matured fighter. Doesn't fight with the same kind of emotion. Do you feel like that's that's a little bit overhyped? Do you feel like he's relatively the same guy um, that you guys? back in 14 uh, look, look he, he's absolutely improved you know there's 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 no doubt about that and certainly 155 suits him a hell of a lot better as it does connor you know it was it was a bit of a you, you i'm sure you know the story it was a bit it was a bit of a kind of weird story how connor got in at 145 to begin with because he had moved to 155 but i don't know whether sean shelby was replying to an old email where i'd mentioned he was 145 but he was actually 155 when we moved into the UFC and then he had to go back down and we had a couple of years there where there was horrible weight cuts and we, we all, we all know how he looked on the weighing scales. Nobody was comfortable with that. And um, now look at him. The man looks like a, an absolute machine um, and, and Dustin looks uh, good too. So uh, I'm drifted off there. What the, know but you know what? Know. Wait a second. I don't know if I know that story. So you guys got signed at 145. You couldn't have told Shelby, Hey, you know we're actually more comfortable at fifty-five. For yeah, you got to you got to remember my circumstances back then. <laughs> I've been harassing those guys for a long time. Yeah, yeah. I lost Connor at one stage. I'd moved to Iceland. You know, everything was sort of falling apart a little bit. And then this branch comes out, and they go, uh, "One forty-five fight in a couple of weeks' time. Are you in?" Yep. yep. Okay. I'm in. I'm in. <laughs> I wasn't going to be writing back and saying well you know how about 55 and you know i can't quite get connor on the phone for two days so just give me a bit of time i of course <laughs> just said yes and then i would figure out how to make it happen when i get off the phone <laughs> fair enough um, um the question i was asking was the idea that he is dramatically yeah, look, better he, he, he certainly has but i really wish um and, and there probably is some footage out there to show our preparation in the lead up to the first um the first Dustin fight, but there was just so many firsts for us in that contest. You know, again, going to Vegas, that whole madness that 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 began, you know, the real mania began in the lead up to that fight. I'm sure you remember some of it. Yep. Um, and I just look at myself. I've done so many hundreds of training camps and hundreds of corners since then. It's. It, I'm just comparing the setup we had then where it was, you know, me, I had no real sports science background no no coaching at any high level background didn't play sports at any high level background i was a nerd comic reading engineer and i was trying to patch it together as we went along and now in though in that half a decade since since the guys have come along again i feel i, I, I apologize i'm just repeating myself but it's it's just so difficult to compare the difference in the professionalism around Connor's preparation in the last five or six years compared to at the start where, yes, we were obsessed with technique and we had a freak athlete that had incredible genetics. Put it together, and if we can get this sip, the 2020 season can be in 2021. I'm so excited for everybody to see what happens when you get a once-in-a-lifetime um, fight IQ with the type of special attributes he has and you put on top of that you know formula one racing team technology and brain power and let's go first time since october of 2018 that he has to cut down to 155 how do you feel about that like how has that process been obviously we're a few days away now 
from the weigh-ins, but it's clear like his face looks different than the last time I spoke to him prior to the Cerrone fight. So how has that been? Yeah, it's look, there's no there's no point in pretending it's it's a fun side of the um process. But if I could use a quick example of of the timing as well of this, this fight. So the, the timing of this fight is um 9 a.m. As, as as you know. We're running on Vegas time. So he generally fights 9 p.m. Vegas time, which is 9 a.m. Abu Dhabi time. And that was, I was a little bit worried about that at the start because Connor is more of an L than a lark. He likes the late nights rather than the early mornings. And weeks ago, well, months ago at this stage, we started adjusting. And I was, I was worried about it, how we'd react to that, you know, being told you've got to start getting up earlier and earlier and earlier. And there was a, maybe a momentary resistance and then a complete acceptance and like, okay, what time? Well, you, you could get up at like four or 5 a.m. Yep, done. It was just very, um, almost unusual to see this side of them of just accepting that that's going to be uncomfortable, but it's done. No, no complaining, no moaning, no whining. It was just done. And it's, I feel he has the same mindset towards making the weight. And he's, he's really not far off now at all. Um, but we have a great guy on board, Tristan. Uh, he's doing a phenomenal job. And they've had markers over the, since uh, early December that he's to hit along the way, hit them all. It's going to be a very gentle water cut on the morning of it. We get two nights sleep. We get two sleeps before he has to fight. So it's, 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 almost, it's almost a waste of time this week weigh-ins to be honest it's so long before the fight what's it really proving you know <laughs> either way in stepping in the cage right. or what's this two nights sleep like it's not a i don't know i just think the whole weigh-in thing has to be has to be rethought you know it was, it was designed during a pre-internet time and now we're in a world where i'm speaking to you in a hotel and Abu that it's archaic it's stone age it's ridiculous something new has to be come up they have to come up with something new how much do you think he weighs entering the cage enough <laughs> now you know connor with his numbers i ain't yeah. don't be trying to trick me into oh, no, 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 i was just there. curious okay fair okay you can know I... what i will say what i will yeah. say is that i would predict him and dustin walk into the cage with no more than a pound between them fair they enough. both look to me very very similar which again always makes me think why the hell are we doing this? Right. Wait them today. I guarantee you, we bring walk down to the hotel now, put them both on the scales, probably a pound or two, one way or the other. I'm sure they look at each other, shake hands, and go, nah, I don't really care. Let's just do the fight. But anyway, it's part of the drama. It's part of the story. I guess we have to lose a bit of water weight, put it back on, be the exact same weight an hour later, and then have a fight. You bring up a great point about the timing of the fight. This fascinates me. Could you tell us what you guys will do? Like, will he go to sleep the night before? Or are you just staying on Vegas time now? How's that going to play out? Yeah, so that, that was kind of the decision make. Uh, we played around with two, two ways of doing it, I guess. And that is stay on Vegas time for a couple of months. And, you know, just basically get up at, let's say, midnight or one in the morning. And then, um, you know, the contest is at nine. But, uh, doctor, again, this is where it's, it's fantastic having such a, an experienced uh, high-performance athlete initially. He's in the Guinness Book of Records, Dr. Julian Dalby. Um, and he made the point about you can't walk around living in darkness for months. Even, even days, you're going to start really messing with your, um, your hormone levels and, and uh, maybe depression is too strong a word, but, you know, happiness levels will start to plummet very, very quick. It's, you know, I used to do night shifts working in Intel. So I know what it's like to do night shifts. And it, I don't know if you ever had a job like that, but it's, it's miserable. So instead we started just adjusting the clock back so that we were going to bed an hour earlier every night and getting up an hour earlier. And we have it now down to where we go to bed. Like I see now it's, um, it's actually almost my bedtime now, 8 p.m. So go to bed about 8 p.m., get eight hours sleep, mm. get up at uh, 4 a.m., you know, and then the, the 9 a.m., five hours later, doesn't seem like a big deal. And I actually read about Tiger Woods. He had a, he had a tee-off, an unusual early tee-off 
at 9 a.m. And he got up at 4 a.m. in preparation for that because you don't want to get up at 8 a.m. to fight at 9 a.m. You know, you're although you're awake, you're not awake awake. So that that's the, that's the approach we took. Rather than trying to go on Vegas time, just go earlier and earlier. Um, and it's it's been great. Now, it, it helps. We've been in beautiful Lagos. We've been in beautiful Dubai. We're now in beautiful Abu Dhabi. And the big thing is sunlight. So we're almost on sunset, sunrise to sunset, um, which is which is which is a great way to live. It's beautiful. You know, one one thing that I've heard Connor say in the past about a Poirier rematch, a potential Poirier rematch, or even Aldo rematch, is the f- first fights were were so convincing. It's kind of hard to recreate that, right? And and he recently said under sixty seconds, but he would you know welcome the war. That's what he told me last week. Do you feel like there's any pressure whatsoever to try to do something more spectacular than he did the first time around? Do you feel that in him that he wants to stay true to that under 60 seconds so that he could say that he beat him even better the second time around? Um, I don't know. You, you know Connor and pressure now. There's, he's such an unusual human that the, 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 side, of the, the side of the fight, he, the side of, the, of, of all of it he enjoys the most is going to the arena, the locker room, warming up and making the walk and fighting, which for a lot of athletes is like, they just want to kind of get it over with and just do the fight. Mm. So he just doesn't seem to have the same responses to these uh, stresses that, that most people do. So no, I don't get that from it at all. But what, what I would get is that I, there's definitely room for a more, um, and, and again, it's because of how he is, a more perfect fight. If we if we look at the Eddie Alvarez fight, that's that's about as perfect a fight as you can get, and it went. I think I was off by about eight seconds. I'm not, I'm <laughs> yeah. So it you know it, it's not an Aldo knockout. It's not less than sixty seconds. But who cared? I, I wish I had went five rounds of that look, um, because if you're a martial arts fan, if you're if if you appreciate an application of pressure while maintaining what coach Roddy would say edge of range. There's a, there's a slow mo where Eddie literally bends a nose on Connor's hair. That's, that's how much he pulls back just enough. So it bends his nose, a hair in his nose and then bang, bang, he's back in with his shots. Um, so what does it matter if that's a 30 second long fight or 25 minute long fight, the longer, the better, you know, we, I, myself and Connor kind of joked the, the part you look forward to. It's kind of weird is that, the fight will be over. We'll be back on the super yacht. We'll be heading to Dubai and we'll all be sitting around staring at our phones, watching the highlights back, watching the fight back. And he'll be pulling it apart, but also enjoying it, enjoying the techniques, the sequences. Let's see if some of the predictions we made amongst ourselves about what will be the damaging shots would um, training mostly an orthodox stance for this whole camp have paid off. Uh, uh, no, yeah, take that away. Take that away. Um, can you cut that out? Um, yes. So, but you know, whatever, whatever happens in the in the fight, we'll uh, we'll just enjoy it. Okay, fair enough. Um, do you think it goes under sixty seconds? Can we get the prediction? I, I'll do it in the middle here because that was a perfect opening for it. Or do you do you expect the war that Dustin has been talking about? Um, I don't expect a war, but I don't. I, I would. I find it hard to see it under sixty seconds because he's. Um, you know he's such he's such a warrior, and I just think the extra bulk he can take a bit more. Um, but I think it'll look like the Eddie fight. There'll be there will be a beauty to it. Um, it'll it'll be perfect. But I, I could see it going a similar length of time. It's going to take a few knockdowns. It's going to take a few exchanges. Um, and you know we need to be prepared for that. So I'm I'm going to say a, a similar a similar kind of distance. I will echo Connor in saying, I think it will be decided in 60 seconds. It's going to be somewhat obvious the difference in um, skill. I have, I, I, there's no nice way to say that. And the Connor shots will be landing, his won't. You know, I, where I, Dustin said, I thought something kind of interesting. He said he predicted in, in a minute he would be bloodied and battered. And I have to agree with Dustin's prediction. I do think that will happen. And uh, now I think he said for both guys, but yeah. I think it's only going to be one guy. Um, but you know, Dustin's an absolute, an absolute warrior. He's in, he's always in, fun, in uh, phenomenal shape. So 
let's see if we can take the shots. And I, I, I personally hope that we get we get eight or nine nice minutes so that I can pick up another few tips for coaching the rest of my team. How, how do you feel about his, you know, his, his mental state? Like in, in, in the past, it's always been said he gets to the big fight, but, but he loses the big fight. Right. And sometimes he's put more pressure on himself. Some people have noted that, you know, the whole thing with the, the charity and just kind of him being so eager to take this fight, you know, in, in the words of Ally Quinta, who I quoted the last time, you know, he already lost the fight. You, you're too happy to be here. Do you, do you sense that as well? Do you feel like he's just too happy to take part or yeah, do you feel like? I think it's a little bit, a little bit harsh to say that he uh, gets, I, I guess, I think that happened a little bit with Cowboy, but yeah. I, I think it'd be a little bit harsh to say that with Dustin because Look at his his incredible win over Justin, Dustin mm-hmm. and Justin. Um, look at his fantastic win over Hooker. Uh, look at his fantastic win over Eddie Alvarez. You know, so he's had those. Um, I'm not sure if all those are main event slots, but I know he's had a few main event slots. Yeah, yeah. And he's showed up. He's performed, and he's had great wins. Um, the only one recently was his loss to um, obviously Habib, and that's you know he went through. Justin quicker than he went through Dustin, um, and then you, before that you've got to go all the way back to to Connor, right? Uh, Michael Johnson. Then, well, he sorry, Michael out. Johnson. Yeah. Was that not before Connor? No, it was Connor then was, Michael Johnson. Yeah. Okay, and he lost. Yeah, okay, so he lost against Michael Johnson a lightweight. Yeah. Uh, yes. No, the Michael Johnson fight was, if I if my memory serves me correct, was the last one before he moved to lightweight. Oh, okay. All right. And you know, well, might- anyway, my, my, my point being is that uh, he does have a lot of those kind of big fight feel fights and he's performed. So it I, I don't I don't expect anything else except the, the best version of Dustin. And he is certainly going against the best version of Connor. I'll correct myself so the, the internet doesn't hate me. The first fight at one 155 was after Connor, but then he lost to Michael Johnson a couple years later at 155 as well. So he had been at 155 for some time. And then after that, went on that great streak, beating the likes of uh, Eddie Alvarez, Anthony Pettis, Justin Gaethje, et cetera. Um, all right. So let's say it goes, you know, as, as you are predicting and Connor is as well. How many times do you think he fights this year? That's the big question everyone wants to know. Um, I think three times is very doable. Uh, you know, you kind of have if you break one third, one third, one third, like yeah. every four months, I think is very doable. Um, if the, I, I, yeah, if, 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 if the weight cutting thing wasn't something that's, you know, part of the game, uh, it, it'd even be more, I believe, but let, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's try and get three in this year. And when we, when we're starting in January, I love January fights, by the way, this is, this is, yeah. I think my favorite. I love preparing during um, December and, and, you know, we obviously we're very lucky. We get to go somewhere sunny during that time. Um, but it's, there's something very, I don't know, it's, it's a fresh start to the year or something. And he's had a few now. He's fought a couple of times on either my birthday or, or my dad's birthday, actually, oddly enough. And then Tom Egan, he made his UFC debut on my dad's birthday, January 17th. So, a lot of 17ths and 18ths on the, on the record. I was going to actually end with that, but since you brought it up, yes, uh, Seaver, um, of course, the Cerrone fight of last year. These are all you know anniversaries that people are celebrating this week. But the one that I find most interesting is UFC 93. As you mentioned, Tom Egan, the first Irishman to fight in the UFC. And uh, there, there was that famous photo of, of Connor and, and Chuck Liddell at the event. <laughs> The brash Connor pulling in Chuck uh, with the gum in his mouth and everything like that. Uh, do you, and, and so you were there cornering Tom, correct? Do you, yes. do you remember like what, what, like now, tw- what is it? What are we 12 years later? What is your greatest memory of that night? Um, well, it was a funny, I remember, uh, I guess fight week and we got in, I don't know how, but Connor and Pat Berry, uh, got into a, a slapping contest in the what? in the lobby. <laughs> I'm sure I have this right. Is this not a story? They were like slapping each other's stomachs. Am I? Am I? Am I Pat Barry, the fighter, it? like Rose's yeah, fiance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's. If someone will throw it up, there's a picture there online, and Connor 
he's running at him, slapping him, and they were they were having some crazy fun back and forward. Um, I'm sure that's that UFC, but anyway, uh, obviously an, an amazing experience walking uh, walking out to the Irish audience. Um, yeah, a lot a lot of fun. It was just just a lot of fun. I felt it, it came a little bit early for for me and for us to to get exposed to that uh, level. We were all still figuring things out very much, um, but it was a great taste. It was a great, it was a great sample of things to come, and I certainly lit a fire underneath uh, Connor. So, yeah, what, what what a great experience! What are the chances the next one, number two this year, is against Habib? In your opinion? Oh, I, I I don't know. I, I you know, it's funny. I, I was thinking today that I've the last few years are a bit of a blur to me. Like I have lots of memories of Dustin one, all, all, all what we got up to going to Vegas early, checking out new things. Um, the after party, I stole one of Connor's suits. There's a funny video of that online. And um, I have a lot of real memories around that. And then it seemed to be that the mindset changed after that fight. And it's like, literally it's bookending what I'm going to try and change in my mind that we were always just living in the future. It was always, who's he going to, uh, is he going to win this fight? You know, so you're always imagining the future where he's going to fight. And then just as you get to that fight, then they'd start asking, when this is over, who's going to be the next one? So you were, you were living in, in that future and you'd have to make sort of predictions on that. And then as you walked out of the cage, you'd have a great win and you've been 12 weeks training for it. When are you up next? Who's going to be against next? And since the Dustin fight, like the Holloway fight, I was I was just thinking about that. I have no real memory of that fight. I don't really remember the hotel. I don't remember being around the hotel. I don't remember doing any sightseeing. Um, I know that sounds silly to say. Um, so all of those deceiver fight, all of them are just a blur. It was just everything was a million miles an hour, and and now being a little bit older. Um, I really want to stop to enjoy the process as it goes. And I, I'm trying to be conscious about, uh, again, I'm new agey hugging trees here, living in the moment. And I'm enjoying day by day. And the last few days and weeks have been incredible having Orla and, and Connell here. And we have a fantastic fight on the 23rd uh, in a beautiful arena. And I'm, I'm just going to live in that moment. And then when that passes, We'll, we'll jump back on and, and who the hell knows what's next. Fair enough. Uh, and I respect that. So could I ask, are you disappointed this isn't for the belt? Um, if he, if he hadn't have had it before, yes. You know, because you, it was, it was such an honor for him to get the second belt. Um, and, you know, of course I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to take a huge amount of pride in that. Um, but he's done that. He's, he's had the bells. He's got the money. He has the fame. Now it's different. Now the motivation is different. Now it's about adding to the highlight reel. It's about trying to get, it's, it's chasing that elusive, perfect fight against a perfect opponent. Um, if at the end of the, if, if at the end of a great fight, there's, there's a shiny thing around his waist, would it really change my level of happiness about the last couple of months? See all Connors come true to see him come true that on the other end. To be sitting beside him this morning, we were both up early this morning. We were the first on the boat, and we were watching the uh, the the UFC um, the countdown show on the yacht and sharing a little moment there. Like that, that's more valuable to me than than another belt. Knowing him like you do, do you think? Like I think there are some people who feel like his career will feel incomplete or he'll leave upset when it's all said and done. I know he says he'll never retire, but when it's all said and done, if he doesn't get that rematch if he doesn't get to right that wrong do you subscribe to that notion like do you feel like it's something that will eat at him when he's old and gray no no i i don't see that in connor's mindset or attitude about anything you know he he let you know let's he had a loss against joseph joe duffy uh, many many years ago on, on a european promotion and uh, he didn't obsess over that he, of course he could have he could have got that fight back in the UFC if he'd have really put his mind to it you know actually Dustin fought him um, so I just I just, it's not going to be something that keeps him up look at him look look, look what he 
he has. Look what he's achieved. Um, and, and on top of everything that you could list that he's achieved, what I have seen most recently is um, contentment. And that, that to me is almost as valuable as the ridiculous yacht that we, yes. throw, we sail over here on. Of course, it's more valuable. And that, that's what he will have at the end of his career. If, if, at the end of his storied career, if, if it ever ends, will right. be, I believe, happiness and contentment. And I look at him now giving, uh, giving Connor Jr. some instructions on the side of the mat. And I always said, the times, the times I could get him to show up to coach's class, they were some of the best classes I've ever seen being taught, being coached. And uh, I, w- I, w- I would do anything, anything to drag him into that role at some stage. Ah. And, uh, maybe Connor Jr. will be his first student and then we'll see where he goes from there. And that's, I believe, where he will drift into and find even more joy and contentment. He spoke a little bit about um, his growing respect for the kind of coaches and mentors and teachers he's had throughout the last few decades at the time, not really seeing what they were sacrificing every, every night out of their house, down at the local gym, the local boxing gym, you know, you guys have gotten to know Phil Sutcliffe, which he is a, he's a gym that you're going to get a lot more out of as, as time goes on, as months and years go by, you need to get him on a lot more than you get me on. Uh, he's he, the stories he has. And, and he's just, that's that, that, that guy, that guy down in the community gym, that they have hundreds, if not thousands of stories of getting kids in those early teenagers and knocking them onto the right path. And Connor, I really feel now that growing up and with his own kids, sees the value in that. And he is already trying to help that sector by investing in, in a potential gym for, for Dustin in his area and in other things he's doing as well. He wants to give back, you know, and that's the area he knows best is he knows firsthand what what combat sports can do for people and i believe that will continue to be more of his story do you share and just a couple more i know you have to go to past your bedtime but i'm just curious do, do you uh do you share his extreme interest in the pacquiao boxing match and in him you know you're a mixed martial artist at your core right and you know there was michael jordan back in the day who went and dabbled in baseball for a couple of years in his prime and everyone said this is such a shame stick to basketball you're the greatest basketball player of all time would you prefer if he just stuck to mma or do you share his interest in going after the pacquiao fight and perhaps other boxing matches <sighs> you get me in trouble here ariel you always <laughs> ask you always ask the best questions and uh Phil so clear won't be happy with me. <laughs> but yes, I, if, if you're going to ask me, I'm going to pick MMA all day, every day. Um, Mayweather one was a great experience. Never, would, wouldn't take anything back. But if he, um, if he, if he gets the Pacquiao fight, uh, I'll be one of those memes that, you know, it's smiling, but you see a tear coming down. And <laughs> I'll, I'll high five him and, and wish him the best as he, as he prepares for it. Um, but I think he... What I think we're on, on the path, on the journey to, to doing something extraordinary in, in mixed martial arts. And th- that's where I'd like him to go. <laughs> Stick with MMA. Fair enough. Um, do, you have a dream, before, do you have a dream fight, like before it's all said and done, a dream matchup for him? Um, you know, I, I think he said it on, on, on your interview again, was the, uh, the Nate, uh, Nate Diaz. At 155 for the yeah. belt, that that's a story. That's a great story, I think. Um, you know, I I, I <laughs> when the rematch was announced at 170, I was like, oh, we're not doing at 155. Right. <laughs> so 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 to so to you know, in the, of course, Connor would hear none of that because he lost at 170. He wasn't going to try and it wouldn't have. I would have felt an incomplete win if he did force Nate to drop down a weight. Um, but to do the, the 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 decider, the trilogy, and for the belt, I, I think that'd be a great story. So that that'd be probably the one I'd pick if if you want if you offer me a dream fight. The, let's make the trilogy and let's make it for the belt. And and finally, you know, when I spoke to him in January and when I spoke to you last January, going into the Cerrone fight, part of the narrative was can he get back on track? You know, he had not won since the uh, the Alvarez fight and. You know, the, the, the local, we talked about this, the local narrative was the Irish people, they've turned on him and all this stuff. 
that is not a narrative anymore. Like that's not a thing. It feels like everyone's back. It feels like everyone believes that he's back. And now everyone wants to see what this, you know, Connor will do, which is great. Um, and I think people are, are believing that, you know, he's back motivated Connor as, as the internet likes to say. Shaven head Connor is next all the way said. I like that one. Yes. Um, but I remember talking to you in 2018 at the uh, Nassau Coliseum on Long Island at, at that Bellator show a week after the Habib fight, right? And, and you talked about the training camp and Connor's talked about the training camp and whatnot. Could you have ever imagined that we'd be in this spot where he's this motivated, this on point, this calm, this relaxed, he's sitting back, he's happy, he's kids, family, like it just feels like, and, 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 and maybe I'm a fool for saying this, like it's all coming into to place for him. The stars are aligning and he's figured out how to be Conor McGregor, right? He's figured out how to be famous. And now we're about to see something special. Would you have ever imagined two years ago that we would have reached this spot? Because as you know, we were trending down a path of the stereotypical fighter who had it all and lost it all. Yeah, he, he did go to the brink. He did go to the edge of that cliff. Uh, he stared into the abyss, and it was it was it was a tough time, you know. And he's he's always been somewhat of a kid brother to me, and I admire him so much, and um, he's given me so much. And yes, I I did think that maybe he's gone because what am I going to do? You know, what's what was what were any of us going to do? He had all the power, all the money in the world, all the freedom in the world. He. This was something he was either going to decide for himself one way or the other. And I'm just, you know, it's so, uh, it's, it, it seems an empty word just to say, I'm so happy to see that where he is now in comparison. Um, but I'm, but I am, it's, it's really, it's, it's just incredible. And like I was, I was saying about his son, um, Connor Jr., has been making friends with my son now and he's he's unbelievably kind and compassionate and gentle with him and he's a boisterous four-year-old boy you know running around like he's punching the hell out of me anyway and then he comes over to Connell and, and is so gentle with him and to think that you know they're going to grow up together which I didn't I, I you know you just didn't know that that was going to happen and are we going to be in a decade or two decades time are we going to be having Christmas dinner and Connor Jr. is, you know, is in his twenties. And so it's, it, it made that picture get a lot clearer and a lot more possible. Whereas two years ago, I maybe thought that that was, we were going to go our separate ways. And um, yeah, it was, it was somewhat heartbreaking at the time, but, but look, we're uh, proud of the past all his achievements he's made and we're excited about the future because 2021 is going to be his year again. What a story. Unbelievable. And, and you're always very gracious. I always look forward to these chats before the fights and after the fights as well, if things go well. Uh, and we've, we've only I've missed never it. Missed one. Yeah. We, well we only missed, now. we only missed one, one uh, pre-fight chat that was prior yeah. to Habib. So, I mean, it was perfect, right? I mean, we could just forget about all that. Uh, it was a perfect storm <laughs> <laughs> of, of bad things, but uh, thank you, John. Uh, congrats again to you and your, your new family, your budding family. It's great to see you grow up. I remember you with the lip ring back in the day, you know, you. <laughs> so, so you're, <laughs> yes. Uh, and, uh, and, and best of luck to you and the team this week with the weight cut. And of course on Saturday night, as you go up against Dustin Poirier for a second time, all the best. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN plus right now.